Good morning. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I've had quite a few questions asking me about equipment, um, one thing and another, so I thought I'd better do a little bit of a diatribe on it. Um, one of the questions that I've asked, which I'll, I'll ad address first, is what equipment did you use with 10 years after? And what equipment are you using now? Well, with 10 years after, most of the time, um, we used Marshall amplifiers, mostly because, mainly because they, once we started traveling all over the world, they were, seemed to be everywhere. So if they needed, although we took our own equipment with us, if, it needed, if amps needed to be repaired, then they were easy to get fixed. And I had, I think, four 4x12 four cabs and two 100 watt heads with a 100 watt head spare. And, I, and all the time I played my um, 1962 Fender Jazz Bass. These days, PAs have got much more powerful, so you don't need to have a, allowed a bigger amp to play Madison Square Gardens than the one you do playing a 500-seater venue. I have a, an LW, what is it called? An LWA 1000 Warwick amp head with four 6-inch speaker cab and a one one twelve inch speaker cab. Now that sounds tiny, doesn't it? But I bet you it's louder than my Marshalls if I needed to turn it up. But I say I don't because we use a lot of the PA now. Um, the beauty of it is it's such a compact outfit. And I got to the point where I'd gone through so many amplifier cabinets, huge, huge cabinets, that I would say would take two men to lift and my crew would probably say it takes three. And I, I thought this is not fair. I can't pick the gear up myself, so I'll go for something smaller. And I did, and, and I'm so pleased with this Warwick rig that I've got. With that, I'm, I'm using an Avalon DI, so that our Soundman head has the opportunity to take a little bit of the DI and a little bit um, from the amplifier and mix the two. Talking about sound, let, let's come on to that now. This, you know, getting the bass sound you want is like searching for the holy grail. Um, you, you almost think you've got onto it and you haven't. And over, over the years, I've had several amplifiers. Um, and I'll give you a rundown. I've made some notes here so we can, we can have a look. I started out with a, a Vox AC15, one inch, one twelve inch speaker. That was my first uh, amplifier. Yeah, when the 12 inch speaker wasn't working, I, started, I used a radiogram cabinet at first, put a 15, an 18 inch speaker in it and started using that. And that really didn't become, wasn't powerful enough, so I started experimenting with amplifiers. Stereo, I say stereo amplifiers, hi-fi amplifiers, they were actually mono, That's, they were Leek, Mollard and Quad, I used those for quite some time. Um, with various cabinets, um, which uh, I had a book called Loudspeaker Enclosure Design, I built every single cabinet, sand-filled baffles and one thing and another, some that I couldn't even get in the van when we tried, to, when I built it, I had to cut them down. And then um, a friend of mine, Bonnie, that played bass with um, Shane Fenton and the Fentones actually was giving up and I bought a, a Vox AC30 Super Twin from him, two 12-inch speakers. And um, that used to belong to Jet Harris in the shadow. So I've got Jet Harris's old amplifier, those of you that know who the shadows are. And I used that head with two 18-inch two speaker cabinets that, that I'd built right up until... I think we, we had a little association with Watkins when, and um, we used those amps for a time until we went on to Marshalls. And um, what have I got? I was, I'm going down the list. Yeah, Warwick, Hughes and Kettner, Gens Benz, Warwick I've said, acoustic amplifiers, it's an American company, Galleon Kruger, um, Ampeg, Mark Bass, Trace Elliott, um, that's enough, isn't it? And, uh, and aside from that, I, I fiddle around with changing the capacitors, capacitors out on the on the bass guitar um, for the tone. I used to go down to Marshalls and we'd change out the capacitors to one or the other on the amplifier. Um, input resistors and one thing and another to, just to try and get the tone, the tone that I was looking for, say the Holy Grail. Um, Two main basses now, 1962 Fender Jazz Bass, that's what I used throughout most of 10 years after Korea. And um, lately, and with HSS, um, and a little bit with 10 years after too, the Bass Centre London built me a replica of my 1962 Jazz Bass, which as I've said in previous videos, it was too much of a responsibility on the road. And I've been using that along with a, a five-string Warwick 
bass, which um, again is a passive bass. And um, those are the two main instruments I use now. I've got 25 basses that I can just about remember, and I'm sure if I go in my cupboard there'll be some I've forgotten. And uh, that sounds crazy, doesn't it? But it's only, it's only what, one every two years if you look at the, no the number of years I've been playing. And I'll read you what they are. It may be, maybe we can do some talk, someone can say, what was so-and-so like? And I can probably talk about it. Um, an acoustic bass, that's a, that's a rare fretless bass that was made by the acoustic amp company. Gibson bass, Fender jazz bass and P bass. I've had, have and still have maybe three or four of those. Um, a couple of Lackland basses, three Warwick basses, um, Sadowski bass, Wall bass, Rickenbacker bass, three or four Warmoth basses, two Leo Line signature basses from the bass centre, to a, a Nash P bass, a Nash jazz bass, Hofner basses, Epiphone basses, Carla bass, you know, the rubber string bass, and a folding upright bass, the Charlie Chadwick folding upright bass. So um, that's quite a few basses, and um, I get pleasure out of playing them all, but um, I don't very often take them out on the road. I'm mostly recording, I fall back on, on you know, on the five string and the fender. Um, that's about it. Um, oh, I should mention in-ear monitoring. That's always a contentious subject, particularly with bass players um, who tend to like the trouser flap that you get from a big boomy bass cabinet. Um, I found it was good because of the bass, the bass frequencies spread across the stage and sometimes the bottom end is difficult for the singer to pitch. So I don't like to be too loud. I, I like to balance up to the kit and get an on-stage sound, as I said. But if, it, if it's a little bit loud for the bass player, for the bass player, never too loud for the bass player, is it? Um, if it's too loud for, for the guy that's singing, I can turn it down a little bit, but still have it coming through my in-ear monitors. And it took me about a year and a half to get used to working with in-ear monitors. And um, some nights it, 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 it works better than others. It's down to the acoustics, like it like an amplifier, any amplifier sound, whatever instrument you're playing, some nights you'll get a great sound, some nights you just, no matter what you do, you can't get that sound because the acoustic, on-stage acoustics are not, not good. But anyway, have fun, have a great weekend, do the best you can, hope some of you can get out and play. Maybe the moon will open up, a Covid-free moon, and we can all go and do gigs on the moon, assuming we can fly there. Uh, but uh, anyway, have a great weekend. Have fun and enjoy your music, whether you're listening to it or playing it. And please, if I've forgotten again, please subscribe to my channel. And um, I always welcome comments. Um, I can ignore them if they're rude, but I, I've got lots of interesting comments. Would you, what about this, what about that? And it gives me something to talk about. So uh, don't be afraid to write. Okay, have fun. Take care. Bye.